Hello, everybody, and welcome to the summer section of Pathophysiology at SUNY Poly. Yay! I am actually hiding from my children on the back porch, so if you hear the soothing sounds of nature and or vehicles passing by, I apologize. But right now, we're in the middle of COVID, and we got to do what we got to do to get work done. So I create these videos to walk you through the class. Save this link so you can refer to it in the future as I'm going to go over the entire course. So you would log into Blackboard just as you would to get your emails, the same username and password. Once you get into Blackboard, you will see <coughs> these tabs at the top, come to courses and then search for your summer section of pathophysiology. Now, before we leave this page, I'm going to show you a little bit about the lockdown browser. You know this course is entirely online, okay? We used to have it in person, so you might hear a reference on some of the videos as to it being in person. It is not. It is completely online at this point. And we have bought this Respondus lockdown browser. And this system will monitor you as you take your exams. So you will need a separate webcam and you will have to thoroughly scan the area that you're taking the exam and then stay in one place while you're taking it in order to not get flagged for the exam. Okay. I have very specific directions about this in the course that I want you to follow, which we'll go over in a little bit. But I just wanted to point out to you on this first page is a description of how you download this Respondus Lockdown Browser for your exams. You don't use it for quizzes, it's just for exams. You'll see here that there's a student tutorial. Click on that, download the app to your computer, and then I have a practice quiz in the course so you can practice taking it. That's the only quiz that you'll take with this Lockdown Browser. It's in order for you to get used to using it and make sure you're using it appropriately. Okay, so take a look at that before you even get into the course, please. Okay, now let's enter the course. You'll see Nursing 570, Summer 2020. You'll enter that course. And there's several tabs over here. Okay, there's a home page, which it always brings you to. There's a Blackboard orientation if you're not familiar with Blackboard. There's announcements. I will send you weekly announcements starting today. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll send you this welcome video. I'll also send you week one work. I don't use a calendar, but I do have things written down for you. I'll show you in a minute. Start here is like um, which book is used, um, my information, a little welcome um, to the course, your syllabus, um, I don't use Collaborate Ultra. We use the discussions. We do some case studies. Um, but the bulk of the material, I know you can't see it really well. I didn't make the screen big enough, is under content. Okay, you'll see it when you open it up. So once you get familiar with the course, really the main place you're going to be going is announcements and content. So announcements is self-explanatory. You can go in and see the announcements. You can also get the announcements as an email as I will send them as both. Okay. So let's go into content. First thing, copyright material. You are not allowed to put any of this online. Um, I had a student, I think very innocently, who put um, my information online as Quizlets. You're not allowed to do that. If you do do that, you need to make it private. So it's only for your own personal use. Okay, so this is copyrighted material. The weekly schedule. I went through and I organized this so you knew exactly when things would be due. Okay. It's a compressed schedule. It's eight weeks. We cover two weeks of the regular semester every week with one week off. Okay, you could see there I gave you the 4th of July week off that comes at a very welcome time. You're kind of going hot and heavy here for a while with this material. And then come 4th of July week, we'll take that entire week off. That'll give you a little bit of catch up time. You can work ahead if you like, um, because the normal 
semester only has 14 weeks and we have eight weeks here so you can see it doesn't correlate. I also gave you the dates for the exams. Now the way the exams will work is exam one you can see will be open from Wednesday June 10th at 4 a.m. to Thursday June 11th at noon. You could take it any time if you're absolutely pressed for time then um, let me know and I could extend it a little bit not a lot but a little bit. Um, you would take it any time within that time period. I do not time them because they are proctored by the respondent system, but they are 75 questions. So I would plan on an hour and a half. Usually people don't take that long, but you know, just to give yourself enough time just in case anything goes wrong. The next exam too. So there's three major exams. That is also 75 questions. That will be open Wednesday, June 24th from 4 a.m. to June 25th at noon. And then the final is Wednesday, July 15th to at 4 a.m. to July 16th at noon. So I give you those ahead of time so you can get scheduled. And like I said, if you're absolutely pressed for time, you can open it a little bit one way or another. Um, you know, we can't go too far off that schedule as I like to run them at the same time. Okay. And then the weekly work, week one, week two, etc. Okay, back to content. When it is time for you to take your test, give me just a second here, I'm entering this student preview so you'll see exactly what you'll see in your own course. So it is time, say, for exam one. Exam one will be in all tests and rubrics, okay? You don't see it now, it will be there. You'll see exam one, it'll open up on the dates that I told you. You'll come in, you'll click on it, um, you won't click on it in here. You actually go through the Respondus app. That's an important thing to know, okay? When you are doing the quiz to teach you about the Respondus proctoring system, exam one, two, and three, okay? The rest of the quizzes, you don't use the proctoring system. You can just take them right in the course. So whenever you have an exam that you need to take with Respondus, you will enter it. So you would close down this browser and there would be a Respondus app that will be loaded onto your desktop. This is super important because this is where people miss it and get stressed out. Okay, you'll have a Respondus app when you're ready to take your exam. You'll enter into that app. It'll open up Blackboard just like you're in Blackboard. And then at that point, you'll open Blackboard, put in your password, come into content, come into all tests and rubrics, and you'll see exam one in there. But you got to go through Respondus, Respondus, Respondus for exams. Very important, okay? So, because that's where people mess up, they get upset, just remember to go through Respondus for your exams, okay? So, your exams will be in here, all three of them. And right now, you can't see them because they're not open yet. Now, Case studies. We will have case studies that'll be posted in the discussions. Um, I, I think for summer, there's only a few of us. Once I explain it, you could just tell me which week you want to do it. Let's try to do it, you know, weeks, um, not that week we have off, but you know, week one through six, I think, or one through five, I think we might have week six off you know, or week seven, let's try not to do week eight. So pick a week that you want to do your case study, let me know, and then you'll follow these directions. So I have these posted for you. Read them very carefully before you do your case study, okay? It will be a typed case study that you will do in the discussion. And I've changed this a little bit from previous years. I'm trying to open it so you can see it. There we go. Okay. So, um, and I have written out directions that we'll go over in a different segment. But this is the rubric that I follow when I will grade your case studies, okay? So you're going to create a case study that includes a thorough history and a description with pertinent information to create a diagnosis because your fellow classmates are going to try to guess your diagnosis. After your students have posted their guesses at the diagnosis, you will post the actual di diagnosis. 
and you can see right across the board. I've given you exactly how to get all the points. So you want to get all your points for the case study, follow excellent effort that's on the right there. Here, actually, let me, let me bring it into a regular format. Okay, here we go. Okay, so with your case study, if you want to attend, which I know you all do, okay, concepts are described in your own word. When you are creating and organizing your case study, please put it into your own words. Don't sit and read from a document. We need to practice how to talk to students, right? Or patients. I'm talking to students. You need to practice talking to patients. Explain things well and present them well. All pertinent information is provided. A diagnosis is included after your classmates have guessed. Okay, you got to wait until they submit all their guesses. Uh, I, I, I know this is slightly confusing. I have the directions um, on a different page, which we'll go over. I'm just going over how I'm going to grade this. Okay, you're going to have to respond to two case studies. So response, and these are the same. You need to make a deliberate connection between course concepts and the evidence and literature to support your diagnosis. Okay. Your responses are complete. So you're going to try to guess a diagnosis of your students' case studies. They're going to present a case study. You're going to have to guess. Okay. With your guessing, you need to make a deliberate connection with your diagnosis, support it with information from the class and evidence in the literature. Your responses must be complete and comments made on the content must be you know, presented from the case study, okay? To get all your points, like I said, you've got to respond to two of them, okay? You just follow exactly what I've given you, okay? All right, so. I have, a, I'm so sorry. I'm a little distracted because there's a bee outside with me right now. Okay, I'm going to just ignore him. Okay, so while we're talking about the case studies, I know that's slightly confusing. Okay, so let's go into discussions. Discussions will be where you post your case study. Okay. And if we go into discussions, first of all, there's directions on how to use the discussion forum. So in this discussion region is where you'll complete your case studies, okay? So here is an explanation about how to use Blackboard. So please watch that so you know how to post your case studies. Here are the directions for the case studies, okay? You only need to do one case study. You don't need to do one every week. For the entire semester, you do one case study, okay? You, usually I assign weeks. I won't for the summer. Please tell me which week you would like to post your case study. During that week, you'll create a case study, which is worth nine points, and respond to two case studies, which is worth five points each. Finally, you post your diagnosis by the Wednesday after the case studies are due. That'll give you your final point for a total of 20 points. Okay, these are bonus points, guys. So if you follow along and do exactly what you're supposed to do, you will get all your points, okay? So here's the directions for the case study. <clears throat> Please read through that, okay? About how to do that, I have an example, okay? Don't use actual names. This is a new thing that they're starting to do on the boards. They're saying the patient, the healthcare provider, okay? So I used to use patient names because I thought it was fun. I wanna get used to what you're gonna be seeing in the future. So the patient is, you can tell whether they're male or female, ages, um, you know, nationality, if you feel that's an important bit of information, okay? Now, after you post your case study, you're going to respond to two case studies. So I actually think, since we only have a few people, I take it back. I think I'm going to have you guys do your case studies um, all in one week, so that way you'll have enough case studies to respond to, Okay. So um, let me think about that a little bit. I think I'll make the case studies do, I don't know. Um, we'll figure it out. Maybe we'll let you guys get your feet wet a little bit first. And then all five of you are going to present your case studies in one, in one week, now that I'm thinking about it, so you can respond to each other that same week as well. 
After posting your case studies, you've got to respond to two case studies. Okay, you're going to try to diagnose the patient in that case study. And so you're trying to, um, you know, trick your fellow student a little bit. You're going to create a case study. They're going to ask you questions. You need to respond to those questions. Okay. And people are going to try to guess the diagnosis. Okay. Try to support your case study responses with something that you've done research. You don't need to do hours and hours of research. Okay. Try to support it with something either from the class, online, one of your other books. Okay. Don't provide comments such as, that was just a nice video. Thank you for that video. No, you're trying to figure out what the diagnosis is. Thank you for that video. I found that due to these symptoms um, and signs, I think that this is blah, blah, blah. Okay. Please don't copy others' works or you're not going to get your points. And then post your, your diagnostic guess. Okay. With your supporting contents, um, comments. After... So those are your guesses. The week after everyone has made their guess, you will go in and post the actual diagnosis. So everybody knows for your case study what the diagnosis was. Okay. So you'll see week one, week one, um, week two, week three, etc. Week one case study. So you'll see there's two options <coughs> to post. This is where you will post your case study. Okay. All the information that you would give to your fellow classmates in order for them to make an informed guess as to what they think the condition is that you've created your case study around. Once you've read through other people's case studies and you're ready to provide the diagnosis, you put it here. Okay. This will hide people's answers. So you are not looking at others and cheating. Okay. So you don't put your guesses to other people's case studies here. You put them here. Okay. Diagnosis only. <clears throat> Everybody provides their guesses, their responses. I think, you know, that I know this seems a little confusing. Um, but what I'm really, really looking for is well created, thought out and informed case studies as well as diagnoses. I want to see that you are providing a professional culmination of compiling the different information and putting it into one cohesive response. Okay, that's what we're really looking for with both the creation of your case study and your responses of diagnoses, okay, to two case studies. So we're looking for very professional presentations here. Okay, so case study. That is a summary of it. Um, let's think about the week. I'm thinking maybe week three, week four ish, maybe the week after your first exam. We'll think about doing that. You'll come in, post your case study. Okay. And then respond to two in an attempt to try to diagnose your fellow students case studies. Okay. Read through that information very carefully before you complete it. And let me know if you have any questions, of course. Okay. So back to content. Once again, always get back to content. All tests and rubrics. That's the rubrics for grading the case study. The actual case study, remember, is in discussions. So case study is in discussions. How I will grade it is under all tests and rubrics. General introduction to class is this video. I'm creating a new one for you. Okay. So I will fix this as soon as I'm done today and get that posted for you. Um, then we get into, uh, the bulk of the material for the course. Okay. So here's some supplemental video. The students in previous classes had me audio tape some of the lectures. And then here are, um, once you leave the class, this is a word document with all the links for the YouTube videos. I have a lot of YouTube videos. Um, that I have posted over the years. I teach PATH here. I teach PATH at Utica. Um, I teach neuro, taught neuro. I teach a and I've taught nutrition. So to um, go to my YouTube channel, you'll see a lot of those. But to actually follow them right in order, here they are for you. So if you want to save this for future reference, there you go. And then those audio lectures, if you just want to listen. 
<clears throat> back to content. Okay. We come down we get into the actual leaks. Okay. So, um, you will see, I still have the weeks labeled like we have during the regular semester, week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, etc. Okay. You will be doing two of these weeks for every summer week, um, which I explained to you earlier. I didn't change the weeks. Um, because I was afraid it might get a little confusing because I have the syllabus set up for the normal weekly schedule. But what I did is I put the due dates. Okay. So, um, week one will be all the material in week one and week two will be due by the end of May 31st. So if you go into the folders, I have all the content in the folder that you need to do for week one. Okay. Here is the learning objectives at the top and exactly what you're supposed to do. So you print the notes. You can see there are the PowerPoints. Those are the notes. If you pin, print them with three slides per page, it gives you lines and you could take your own notes on them. Watch the videos, take both quizzes. Okay. This is where you have a quiz to learn how to use Respondus, the proctoring system with a videotape. So before you even watch that video, load the app onto your computer, okay? And then watch my video and then take your quiz. You will have to use Respondus for this one and only quiz. So you get used to using the Respondus system, okay? Here's the videos. Here's PowerPoints for genetics. There's a short 45-minute um, lecture for genetics. Here is quiz one for chapter one in genetics. Here is a quiz for respondus, which you will have to take with the respondus system. Okay. So print the notes, watch the videos, take the quizzes. Now, these are review questions that a student had asked me to put together. They, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Here are the questions themselves. So if you, huh. oh, okay. So students wanted, this helps me as well. Students wanted questions to follow along as they were watching the videos. Okay. So here are the questions and then there are the answers right after. So you could say it and it just helps you to sort of pay attention a little bit better. These have nothing to do with quiz or test questions. These are simply review questions you can do to help review things as you go along. Okay. And then I give you the answers right there. You don't have to hand it in. It's completely optional. It's just another learning tool for you. Now, here are my anatomy and physiology PowerPoints and lectures. I had several students ask for them to review. So what I did was I pulled all my anatomy and physiology lectures that I felt were appropriate. This one primarily is about cells um, and fluids of the body, not when it deals with acid base, but more compartment wise. So if you'd like to review those, you're more than welcome. I'll tell you weekly whether I think that they are essential or optional. Okay. So you can see right there, the below are optional. Okay. And that is the first part of week one. We'll look at the second part, which is due May 31st as well. Okay. It's set up exactly the same. So once you click on that folder, and you come down, there are your learning objectives, your PowerPoints, your videos, your quiz, okay? Your review questions. Here's an anatomy and physiology review. I recommend this one. It's blood it is very helpful for this week's content, okay? So both of those weeks are due May 31st. Every one of these folders are set up the same. So I'm not gonna go through the rest of them, but I am just going to pan down. You could see here's week one, week two, both due May 31st. So everything in that folder is due May 31st at midnight. 
Week three, due on June 7th. Week three continued is due June 7th. Week four is due June 7th. It's the only time I'll give you three. Um, those are short. That's why I give them to you. Okay. Well, the first two are short. Immunity is not super short. And every date is on there for you. Okay. Week five, week six of the normal semester are both due June 14th. Okay. There was June 21st. There's two due June 28th. Okay, we have a week off then. Then we'll have two due July 12th, two due, oh, I'm sorry, three due July 12th, because then we will be um, into the final, okay? Um, some of the videos are a little tough to see, I'll be honest with you. Um, I'm going to start redoing them. Um, I can't guarantee I'll get them all done for you. My advice to you, um, for some reason, as we've carried the videos over, uh, they've lost their uh, ability to transfer for some reason, um, which is unfortunate. Um, I'm going to start working on some of them. You will have the benefit of some of the new ones coming up. Um, I probably won't be until the later weeks, I'm thinking, because um, I need some time to figure out exactly how I'm going to do that. But it'll be all the same material that we're reviewing. I'm just going to redo them. I may add a little bit of material to them. So once again, I apologize. Those videos are looking a little old. Um, you will get the benefit of some of the new ones, probably starting, uh, you know, maybe week six, week seven. Okay. So going back to the main screen, <clears throat> there's a syllabus. I am going to pull it up quickly. Oh, there's not a ton that I want to review on this syllabus because I feel like you can review that on your own. Um, I will not be at school, especially this summer. School is closed. If you need me, I promise you, I'm on my emails every morning. If you have any issues, email me and I will get right back to you. Um, so this is an asynchronous course. We don't meet in person. Um, and I don't have set office hours because our schedules are all so different. If you need me, absolutely email me and we can set up a Zoom meeting. Not a problem. Okay, and then it has course objectives, the text and material. Um, the text is optional. It is out of print. Unfortunately, the year or two after I created this course, they stopped printing this um, book, unfortunately. But I like it. It's succinct. It's, um, it summarizes things very well. I give you also a ton of information in the videos and the notes. So if you want to get the text, you can, if you do well reading, if you feel like you're getting enough from my lecture notes, you should be fine. You will need a separate webcam. You need the separate webcam in order to scan the area around behind and under your computer before exams. It's just essential. You can get the cheapest one you want. I don't require any specific type. <clears throat> okay. Method of evaluation, three exams that were 75 points each. Case studies are 20, quizzes are 130, total points are 375. When you look in the grade book, it actually ends up being um, 400. I give you the respondus quiz, which I don't really count on this page. And then I actually have another quiz I'm going to show to you after we review the syllabus about how to scan the area before you take an exam. Okay, there is no B minus. It's 80 to 86. Just want to point that out. There's also no A+. Plus. Um, I, they just do, That is what they do for grad school. That was not my decision. Okay. Learning outcomes you can review on your own. Um, course expectations. Do not cheat. If you are flagged cheating on your respondents quiz, you will receive a zero for that exam. Please don't make me do that. Okay. Course content. Um, like I said, We've got it on the 14-week schedule. Um, I thought it would be more confusing to convert this to eight weeks, so I just left it. Know that you'll be doing two weeks at a time. Program policies. Um, this last page states that you've read and understand the syllabus. You agree to abide by the school and regulations. Um, I understand the assignments within the course. In the event that you need anything, let me know, of course. Can you just email me that you agree to the statement of attestation? You don't need to copy this and send it. I think that if you just email me that you agree to it, that is an appropriate level of agreement. Okay. 
There is one other thing that I want to show you. And beyond this, we've gone through everything. We've gone through the weekly content. I will email you every Friday what is due for the upcoming week. Um, keep this welcome video. It is a great reference to go back to. And of course, I'm here for you. Feel free to email me. I check my emails Monday through Friday um, during the summer, usually 9 a.m. to noon. And um, yeah, the only other thing I want to go through, if we go into content, okay, so all the um, weekly folders are the same. The only one that's slightly different that I want to go over, I think it's in here. Sorry, give me just a second. I have a quiz. That goes over exactly how to scan for respond us. <clears throat> there it is. So it's in week four. So you'll do it when you get to this chapter, week four, which will be your week two. Okay, June, June seventh. And this respond us rules in environmental scan. Um, once you turn it in, I will give you all 20 points. I actually made it worth 19 points. So once you complete it, I will give you that extra point. Uh, we had an issue with cheating, unfortunately. And what I've done for all of our protection is to go in and I created this quiz that reviews the material in the document below on how to use your webcam to scan the area around, under, behind, in front of your computer before you take an exam. Um, if there is any questionable activity that is happening, that you're looking off to the side repeatedly, or looking down into your lap, or getting flagged for some sort of activity where you are looking like you're cheating, and you have done a good environmental scan before you even start. The environmental scan, I'm sorry, I should explain this, is a series of steps that Respondus walks you through to scan the area before you start taking an exam. This should take you one to two minutes, no less than that. And what you are doing is you're showing me the entire area around your computer to show me there is nothing around you. So you're proving to me that there's no way you can cheat, okay? Once you have done that, you put the webcam down, make sure it shows your face clearly that it's aimed right at you. You can practice ahead of time. And then keep your eyes on the computer screen. Okay, if you're consistently look away, you'll be flagged and checked for cheating. Cheating in my course receives a zero for that exam. Your room must be quiet. I've had students go into the bathroom on a chair and shut the door and say, don't bother me. If you have to, do it, okay? You may not use earbuds. You may not have your ears covered. The webcam must focus on your face, but be wide enough that I can see around you a little bit. Don't sit in front of a window because it won't show your face. After you do your environmental scan, this is important. Do not leave your computer. You may not reach for objects. Follow these directions. You will be fine. Okay. So this is for laptops and iPads um, and desktops. I really want you to get the webcam okay, and scan the area. Um, some students stand up and walk away and show me the whole area and then come back and scan again. The more thorough you are, the easier it is for you to prove you're not cheating. That's what you want to do. I don't want to have to, you know, do anybody, write anybody up for cheating. Prove to me that you're not cheating, okay? So once you review this, you're going to click on this and take this quiz, okay? Once you've taken the quiz, I will give you an extra credit point on top of whatever you get. You can use the notes for this, okay? I want you to read these notes, understand them, and know them. So you can open up a second, you can't open up a second browser. You can actually, you know, print the notes off and use them. That is okay. I want you to understand, um, actually you can't, that's right, I don't have this set up. You don't have to, okay, this is important. You do not need to take this with Respondus. Okay, so this quiz, even though it's about Respondus, you don't need to take it with it. Okay, you can use your notes. You can open up a second browser. What I want you to understand is when you are going to use Respondus, 
I want you to understand how to do this environmental scan well. Okay, so there is that. Make sure you complete that. Other than that, I think that is a good introduction to this class. Okay. Um, I will post, in addition to this, your first email. I am, you will have until May 31st to complete, which is a Sunday, I believe. Okay, so you have until May 31st at midnight to complete all the material for the first two weeks. Um, and then starting every Friday, I'll send a new announcement. Okay, um, please, if you have any questions, let me know. Welcome to the class. I look forward to working with you and have a great day.